Hi, I'm Letty Teague. I'm the wine columnist of the Wall Street Journal, and I'm here on Manhattan's Upper West Side at Gotham Wine and Spirits with a prodigious amount of kosher wine around me. I've been asked more than once, um, do kosher wines have to be so terrible? And, uh, and the, the, the easy answer to that is, is no. And I guess the, the other question is, are they all Manischewitz? Everybody thinks of kosher wine, they think of Manischewitz. But as you can see, there are a whole lot of other wines here which are kosher as well. But they're representative of this new dynamic in kosher winemaking, which is to say they're dry, red table wines of, of real character and quality. I have this, this really terrific uh, Cote de Rhum, um, which happens to be kosher, which you wouldn't know unless you looked for the kosher for Passover. And the difference uh, between kosher and kosher for Passover is just that there cannot be any grain product you know, uh, um, uh, involved in the process. That's, that's really the, the, the basic difference. Um, the, the Domaine Natofa is actually made by a French winemaker, but it's an Israeli wine, and this is a Syrah uh, Mouved Grenache blend. They're not just from Israel, although Israel is leading the way in terms of quality uh, uh, kosher wines, but they're from other countries like Australia and, uh, and France, and then of course in America as well. It gets a little bit more expensive. There are some very ambitious uh, um, producers in Israel, and the Domaine du Castel, which is their answer to a uh, um, uh, Bordeaux, is about $65. The best kosher wines are wines you wouldn't even have to mention that they're kosher at all. So a kosher wine doesn't really taste any different from a non-kosher wine. Um, a good wine is a good wine. It can be made anywhere from any grapes. It's just a matter of who makes it. It, uh, it has to be made by an observant Jew and it has to be made without using ingredients that aren't kosher, like gelatin. And of course it has to be made under strict rabbinical supervision. There, of course, is um, a different level of kosher wine, if you will, called uh, Mavushal. Mavushal wines were created first by boiling the wines. The process has since been um, much improved. It's now, uh, the wines are, are flash pasteurized for a very short period of time. It was a, a practice created to safeguard the, uh, the use of the wine by non-believers, non-practicing non Jews. So when a wine is made Mavushal, it can actually be handled or opened by someone who is not an observant Jew. So, we've looked at kosher wines, we've talked about kosher wines, and now I'm wondering what you're drinking when it comes to kosher wines. So, leave your comments below, and I'll be looking forward to hearing what you think.